This chapter covers regular expressions. A regular expression in computer programming parlance or Oracle SQL is a way that allows you to pattern match into strings and find one or more patterns in strings and pull those strings out of a database, for instance. But what we need to do to start with is to get back to the very basics of what an expression is. What is an expression? An expression is an expression or a, a something, a string, a number that equates to something. So the number one is an expression because one is one. X plus Y is also an expression. If you plug two values into X and Y respectively, add the two, you get a result of the expression X plus Y. And obviously X plus Y enclosed in parentheses implies that whatever's inside the brackets gets executed first. This is also an expression where if you look at the precedence of the brackets, the z times p part gets executed first, it gets raised to the power of 2, then multiplied by y, then x gets added, and then you divide by 25. But the whole thing, the point is, the whole thing is an expression in itself. It equates or results in a specific value. mc to the power of 2, or mc squared, is also an expression. It results in a specific value. In other words, E equals mc squared. Energy equals mass times the speed of light squared. Einstein. A query and its subqueries, they are all expressions because they result or equate to a specific thing, a value or a list of values. They result in something. Let's look at some examples. And here we have a bunch of example queries. Anything resulting in a value is an expression that can consist of a single scalar value or a highly complex formula. Here are some example expressions, notably expressions that work in Oracle SQL. Let's highlight all this stuff and let's go and chuck it into SQL Developer. Let's just run them just for show. Select everything from dual. Well, the dual table is a dummy table that actually contains a column called dummy with a value of x. Describe dual. And here we have dual described. Dummy with varchar1. So, now let's go and select. Note I'm wrapping this inside here. So I'm embedding this expression here within this expression. So if we were to run this little guy here, exclusively. Once again, I get x. If I take this whole thing here, run one from the other, I'm passing x back to select something, I get the same value. This happens to be exactly the same query, except that I've wrapped the entire thing in parentheses. Meaningless in this situation, but it really implies that the expression is executed internally first. What's happening here is this expression is being allowed to execute first before it passes its result back to this one. So you get the idea. Expressions within expressions within expressions result in an equate to a specific value. Here's another one that's just going down more layers. Same result. I can run this guy. I can actually run this guy with just the one bracket. Passing that back to there. And I can run the one wrapping it. Note that I can't leave one bracket on the left and no brackets on the right. In this case, the left and right are possibly highlighted by SQL Developer. Looks like they might be, but I'm not quite sure of that. There's some funky things with highlighting. Here it's actually running the entire thing. You can see it, and then it does the same thing again. And obviously, if we remove the highlighting, it's, and I press Control Enter, it's going to run everything on that line. So you get the idea of what an expression is. In this case, this is an expression that contains two other expressions. 
where the results from those expressions are actually joined to the table in the calling query using the WHERE clause. We could actually use a JOIN clause as well. And I've quickly gone and created a slightly different example of this one as opposed to using the WHERE clause to JOIN. I've used the JOIN clauses. So I've taken the first data source, the country table, I've joined it with the second data source, which is the subquery, with the JOIN, and then I've done the second one as well. And as you can see, I've commented out these two lines and left this instruction terminator at the bottom. So if I simply click on this query, control enter, it runs the same thing, get the same result. Go down to here, I've got another query. Here I've joined a whole lot of tables together. This is all one great, big, huge, enormous expression that pulls up a lot of data. That's what an expression is. I will copy this code back and put it in the file. Types of expressions. So we're not on to regular expressions yet. We're still looking at the basics of expressions in Oracle SQL. There are some that we're going to look at here, most of them, and some that we're going to ignore because they're a little bit too obscure, really. And the ones that we're going to look at are highlighted in red, and I'll go through them very quickly and then show you examples. A simple expression, a compound expression, a case statement expression, a column expression, a cursor expression, a date time expression, a function expression, an interval expression, a model expression we will ignore. It's got to do with the model statement, which is very deeply into data warehouse. Not really appropriate for a course like this. It's very specialized. Object access allows you to access objects. Again, Oracle is an object relational or relational database, and SQL is more relational in access than any other way. We don't really want to go into objects in a course like this. A little bit too obscure and advanced. A placeholder. Another obscurity. A scalar subquery we want to look at. A type constructor is for constructing a class. Again, objects not relational, a little bit too obscure. And expression lists. So we've got all these guys here. And I could explain each of them here, but it would be better just to look at examples to help you understand. So now let's go and look at what the different types of expressions are by example. And again, we're going to use the same thing. And we're going back into here. So what is a simple expression? It gives me a simple single value. Select null from dual gives me nothing. Select name from a table with a row number equals one, applying the pseudo column, which means it only finds the first row. Select a literal value from dual means go and give me the value 10. A compound expression. It's taking two values and in this case concatenating them together, taking the one string and tacking onto the other. As you can see, my age is 47. In this case, a compound is essentially a substring function that calls an in-string function. It's taking from the substring, this is a string, from position, whatever comes out of here, string. Essentially, um, find the position of in string, which is 1, obviously, and just find that value. The result is string. In other words, find string within string from position 1. This is a string. In string, this is a string. If we do this, and we've left out the last bracket. Let's run this. And it doesn't like that because we've actually got to select. Let's take this example here just to show you actually what's going on inside this embedded compound expression from dual. It's SQL is declarative. It has to be pulled from the database. This is a dummy, but this is the way that SQL is constructed. You can't just say, go and run in string because it doesn't have anything to select from. The required syntax for a select statement 
to get data from the database, even if it's only in memory, which this is, is select something from a data source, in this case a dummy table. So let's run this. We get 11. What is this telling me? It's telling me that the string string is at position 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. It starts on position 11. So this gives me 11. So if I was to take this string here and copy and paste this, I'm just breaking this down so you understand what's going on. So my result here would be 11. What's it going to do? It's going to take the substring from here from position 11. What's it going to find? It's going to find the substring string because at position 11 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 is the string called string. So it just finds the same thing. So once again, all we've actually done is these two compound the one below. What we should do with this is take this statement, get rid of that, we'll put this in the script, the two above compound are compounded by as in a compounded expression All right and we just run this one again just to prove the point point. and here's another compound expression essentially it's saying to date plus 10 so what do you do you say convert 1231 2012 to a date and you can add a number to a date. You can't add a number in Oracle, you can't add a number to this because this is actually a string and it's going to freak out. This is also incidentally a compound expression but it's not going to do anything useful. In fact it gives me an error because it tells me that this is not a number. If I was to do something like this, which incidentally also happens to be a compound expression, and I concatenate, I think I don't have to use the string designators there, but we'll check that. Yes, all it does is add the 10. It auto automatically, Oracle automatically converts the 10 to a string. It assumes it's a string. I could put the string delimiters in there if I wanted to. Oops, go there and there. I don't have to. Strings and numbers are automatically convertible by Oracle SQL, assuming if you put a, a number in a string. Don't expect to put a string and then try and interpret it as a number. It's not a number, it's a string. So the word string is not a number. That would give you an error. If you try to do a compound expression like this, select string. In fact, no, that wouldn't make sense. No, it would string plus 10. Now it's not going to fall over on the 10, it's going to fall over on the word string because it can't add string to 10 because it's not a number. There's your error. That's compound expressions. We will continue with this topic in the next movie. Continuing from the last movie, a column expression implies that you use the name of a column from a table in an expression. I've applied a substring function to it to find the first 10 characters and I've created a, a function based index on it. Function based indexes we'll look at in the indexes chapter later on in this course but essentially all it's doing is it's taking select and we can actually push in the section number as well so we can show you exactly what this is doing. If I run this it's just taken the first 10 characters. As you can see orchestra right the first 10 characters is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. If I'm not mistaken orchestra 9 plus space. If I was to actually edit this I'd see I can see the space character on there. 
Fine. Taking the first 10 characters, simple as that. So to create the index, I highlight, control enter, and it gives me the index. If I were to go into the indexes section on SQL Developer, I should see this index here. And if I edit the index, and I click on SQL, it'll show me the SQL that Oracle would use to create the index. Create index, substring. A function-based index is an interesting animal in that it creates an index based on the resulting value in here. They can be effective and efficient. Again, we will go through those later on. When we get to indexing, a date time expression. This is an interesting one because it allows you to take a date and time, cast it into a date. A cast function is a way to cast a value into a data type. So it's taking a to date, which is a date. It's not the same as a timestamp taking a value, converting it to a date to give an internal oracle date format, which is another animal. It's stored as a number, a Julian number, and then we cast it into a timestamp, which means we're taking string, changing it to a date, and changing it to a timestamp. A timestamp is actually a stamp in time with a date in a time zone. And here I'm actually saying from time zone, Eastern Standard Time at local time from dual and I'm getting essentially a time zone and timestamp or a timestamp within a time zone as local time. I am my local time is Eastern Standard Time, in this case America, New York, eleven AM, so on and so forth. Here I'm actually going to change Eastern Standard Time to Pacific Standard Time. And as you can see I was 11 o'clock, well here I'm 11 o'clock, and I'm going from Eastern Standard Time to Pacific Standard Time, there's three hours across this country so it takes three hours off. For those that are not in the United States, essentially there are three time zones across the United States and many countries have far more time zones than that, so it's not really a big issue. A function expression simply tells you that we're using a function and yes we have seen some of these before but all we're trying to do is classify the different types of expressions to help you have an understanding of exactly what's going on with Oracle and SQL and mathematical SQL declarative expressions. So we run this little guy here and it tells me find substring test one for one it finds the first character. If I was to do say substring test three for one, it's going to find from three for one character, the S, and obviously if I do, let's say from two for two, and you can put negatives in and numbers bigger than the string, so on and so forth. Here's another function expression, pretty simple, nothing complicated about it. We will continue with this topic in the next movie. And continuing from the last movie, and now let's go to an interval expression which gives us intervals between different dates. Hit return on this one. What this is telling me is that my system timestamp is June 7, 2012, and my show date is August, two months hence. So it's got two months, got an interval of two months, zero years and two months. If I was to say take a thousand days, eh, a little under three years, and then take a thousand days off here, turn again, trying to get a bigger interval, and that gives me an error. I think it probably doesn't like this. It wants these two expressions divided up. It's getting confused between the interval and the calculation. It's thinking about it. And here's the result, as you can see. 7th of June 2012, 20th of November 2009, it's actually got 
two years and seven months in the top line. That's an interval expression. A scalar subquery expression. Again, select null from dual is a scalar subquery expression because it pulls a single value. Select 10 from dual is also a scalar subquery expression. A single value pulled from a query. You could say select star from category where row num equals 1, finding one row. Again, a scalar no. That is not a scalar subquery because it's pulling multiple columns. You'd have to say something like category ID, a single value. And then obviously you can say name from category where category ID equals 3. Assuming there is one, finds a single value, a scalar subquery. And here we have an expression list, which means that we select something blah, 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 in expression list. This is the expression list, a list of comma separated values. And you run this and you find whatever the result is as a result of using that expression list, three rows. A cursor expression embeds a cursor into the result of another query. So you've got a query here, it creates a cursor, which passes back technically a pointer object to this query. So we run this, and what we get is this curious thing here, which happens to be built in an object type structure. If I double, I double click and I do that, it gives me the value that's in there. So we could actually do, let's try this. Let's take a copy of this. Let's run this again here. But this time what we'll actually do is we'll say select everything from state. Run this. We're linking them together. And double click this, open this up. And it gives me essentially all the columns inside that table. Now. Can we do this and create something unpleasant by removing the WHERE clause that applies technically a join? What will this do? It does it. Basically, look here. Now we've essentially pulled all the data from the subquery and found all the rows for every row. So for every row of city, we find all the states, regardless of whether they match or not, doesn't make any difference. A case expression is interesting because it allows you to embed decision-making capability within a query, essentially this. In the previous course, we looked at a thing called decode. The decode function for each row basically says, if the state code is CA, push out that. If it's that, push out that. If it's that, 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 that. If it's nothing, do that. So you run this query and you get a result that says if you're in CA, you're a surfer. GA, Nevada, New York, you don't have any. We have New Hampshire, Oregon, and Florida. So for the other states, we get whatever. Coming down here, we've got a certain type of case statement that allows you to put the state code up there. And we run this guy. Same result as the decode. And we can also push the state code down into each one of these, implying we can have different parameters here. And we get the same result again. So there's two ways to build the, the case statement. This way and this way. And they are different, and they do actually have names. This one, where the code or the specifier is put next to the word case, is called a simple case statement. And the other type is called a searched case statement. If we go back into the Oracle manuals, you'll find here simple case, searched case, expression, when comparison, when comparison, when comparison, when comparison or search case, when condition then, when condition then, when condition then, when condition then. So here's your simple case where you apply the field or whatever the restriction is at the word case and then say when something, when something, when something. And the search case says case when something then do this, else do something else. 
case when this do that, case when this do that, you can apply obviously different specifications within each of the elements of the case statement. And going back to here, we've finally got all through the different types of expressions and I'm going to take this script and push it back into my script file. So now we start to dig into the world of regular expressions. First of all, we're going to look at what a meta character is. What is a meta character? It is a character in a programming language that is interpreted by the programming language to have a specific meaning that is not the meaning of the character itself. It's normally a simple character and it gets interpreted by the programming language as opposed to just being what it is. A very simple example is the use in XML and HTML of the less than and greater than characters. And in Oracle SQL we've seen in the past course and earlier on in this course we use the percentage and the underscore characters for pattern matches in the like operator to match strings where percentage finds 0, 1 or more characters in a string and an underscore finds a single character only in a specific position in a string. And what is all this? Well, this is what is known as the POSIX standard meta characters for regular expressions in Oracle SQL. What does that mean, you might ask? One way to find out is to Google it and say, what? is POSIX. In fact, it would help Portable Operating System Interface. So family of standards actually generally used in Linux and Unix. Portable Operating System Interface. Let's just type this in properly. I typed it too fast. And let's just put Linux in there and on Wikipedia. Apologies to anyone who doesn't like Wikipedia, but I find it very useful for technical details. And let's see what comes up. An acronym for Portable Operating System Interface, a family of standards specified by some organization that allows for compatibility between operating systems. So a language like Perl is a language that's compatible between operating systems because it uses standards like this. It's a standard that is in some ways platform independent. So you can have any operating system, any programming language, and so on and so forth. So going back to here, as it says, operating system interface for Unix. So what do all these things do? Well, we'll see in examples shortly, but an asterisk says it looks for lots of characters. It's a little bit like or actually exactly the same as the percentage sign in Oracle SQL. And then we've got a dot that matches any characters. And then a question mark, 0 or 1, a plus sign, 1 or more. The pipe command specifies an all, the beginning of a line, the end of a line. The backslash is an escape character which allows you to force the character following it to be interpreted literally. So if you wanted to interpret a literal dollar sign, you didn't want it to make it think that it was the end of the line of the string, it would be interpreted literally. This declares a list of items. This is a parenthesized section executed as an expression. We've seen this in SQL and examples prior. Basically, the thing inside the round brackets gets executed before the things outside the round brackets. This matches a certain number of times. This matches at least a certain number of times. This matches p times and no more than q, and so on. It gets very complicated. We don't really want to go into too much detail. 
and also in Oracle SQL we are allowed to use meta characters that are used in Perl platform independence obviously if you've worked with Perl you'll understand what a lot of these things are but it's very straightforward matches a single digit D for digit matches a non-digit character capital D matches a word matches a character that is not a word a single white space matches anything but a white space character and so on and so forth there's an innumerable combination or number of combinations of different things we don't need to get into the details what we're trying to do is introduce you to regular expressions in Oracle SQL searching strings for patterns pattern matching strings or pattern matching in strings so let's take a little step back and go back to XML and HTML XML and HTML use meta characters the less than and the greater than sign to allow for interpretation of the other values in an XML file let's go and have a look at it and here's an XML file I brought up on the screen what it's showing you is a structure here that I'm executing by clicking the plus and minus signs inside this file but what's happening is that XML is using characters like this and this and this and this to allow the browser in this case Firefox to interpret this data as having this structure region within demographics name as part of region population area country this is basically a file of demographics data HTML does the same thing and basically what these things are called they're tags they're called tags in HTML XML they're reinterpreted based on the fact that they're enclosed by these characters there's a lot of other programming languages that use and reserve specific characters and strings and words and so on and so forth and there's a lot more that gets interpreted by XML and HTML of course but this is simplicity we don't want to get too complicated So now we finally get to the regular expression functions and they're pretty basic. In string allows you to find the position in a string of a string. Substring allows you to find a substring within a string. Replace allows you to replace a string within a string and count allows you to count the occurrences of a string within a string. And then obviously it's very much like the like condition in regular SQL in the WHERE clause where it allows you to pattern match against the like expression. So now let's go into the Oracle manuals in the master book list. We're going to go and find the SQL language reference. SQL language reference and let's do a search for reg exp underbar count in string replace substring start with in string it says the source character source string plus a pattern which means you search for a pattern within a string from a position for a number of occurrences and then return opt match parameter sub expression I don't know exactly what those means, but return out lets you specify should return relation to the occurrence. If you specify zero, it returns the position of the first character. Specify one returns the position of the character following the occurrence. Pretty simple. The match parameter is a text literal that lets you change the default matching behavior of the function. The behavior of the parameter is the same for this function as for that regular expression count, which we haven't got to. For a pattern with sub-expressions, it means you can use a sub-expression 
which is an integer from 0 to 9 indicating which sub-expression in pattern, so you can have multiple patterns. And it's asking you to apply specific sub-expressions within that pattern. And here's regular expression. It's searching within this string, or actually within this list. Well, it's a list of strings. This is actually a string, even though it's a common delimited list, it's still a list. And it's searching for, from position 1, for 6, as a best guess, the first two parameters are position and occurrence. So it's searching for, following example, examines the string looking for occurrence of one or more non-blank characters. This is a non-blank character, not blank, a sequence. Right, this is a sequence based on the fact that it's in the square brackets. This is the start of the line. Oracle begins searching the first character in the string and returns the starting position of the sixth occurrence. So any non-blank character, it basically starts at position one and finds the sixth occurrence of the non-blank character and sends you back the position in the string. That's pretty basic. And there's obviously other options in here. It's looking for SRP. We don't want to go into the details. Well, that's far too much detail. The next one is substring. Has exactly the same structure. String, pattern, position, occurrence, match parameter, sub expression. In fact, if we go back to in string, and it finally gets there. My connection's a little slow. This has a thing called return option, which we went through. Substring doesn't have return option. And the next one we go to is replace. Again, exactly the same structure. And then count. Source chart pattern position, slightly different. You don't need an occurrence because you're counting multiples. It's pretty simple, it's not complicated. The other one is regular expression, which is a condition. Regular expression like source, pattern, find a matching parameter. Pretty basic. We could actually look also back into regular expression like, and we pick up the syntax diagrams. It's very easy to actually use those to figure out exactly how to use these various functions. It gives you the entire structure of how to build an expression. I find it's very rare when I use in string and substring type functions that I go beyond even the source char string and the pattern. In other words, it's rare that I use position and occurrence. It's even rarer that I use things like return up match parameter and sub expression. That's very, very detailed. So now let's go and demonstrate use of regular expressions. And I have a script and I'm going to plop it in here into SQL Developer. What does this do? Select, or in here it says select name, regular expression string, find the position in the column name of any string that begins with an A. What this means is bring this variable back, return it, that's what the round brackets mean, and the asterisk means anything, and what it's actually doing I can run this query by itself, and we're going from the act table. And select name as well, blah, 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 blah. Run this query first. Let's get rid of this message log. All it's telling me is that this one here has a val of 1, position 1. And let's find, here we go. This one has position 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And the wrapper query simply tells me that it basically finds everything that has something. As you can see here, position 17 the first day, position 24 the first day. So it's pattern matching A and anything else. That's a pretty simple pattern match. We could do the same thing we'd like by first of all looking at the data in the ACT table, then actually picking up like A anywhere within the string, which obviously finds words that contain A or a capital A but not at the beginning of the word as the regular expression would. Slight difference. And here in this case we actually find 
the field and the in-string function. This gives us the same values, 24, 17. This is a pretty simple application of a regular expression. So now let's look at another regular expression. Using in-string, we want to find any word containing the letters A, E, I, O, and U. So we run this and we find all these words containing A, E, I, O, and U. Uppercase. Now, regardless of case, using the little I character, we find all words containing A, E, I, O, U in either case. So in this case, we actually pull up 58 rows back to the previous query. We pull up only 19 rows. So now let's proceed to substring. You can see the patterns are slightly or, if you like, a lot more complicated and a lot more comprehensive than just using a like clause. In this example we find all words with a space on either side of the word, therefore missing out the first and last words in each string. So let's run this one here. As you can see, it finds the word Grand National with the space at the beginning and the end. It finds Springsteen and the E Street as opposed to Springs Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band. So it finds the middle words other than the ones at the, the front and the end. Next we get on to regular expression replace, which replaces a string. And in this case here, we're going to replace all occurrences of the capital letter A in all names with three asterisks. This light clause at the end is really just telling us to find the ones that we've changed. And here's another replacement that adds a space character after each non-null character. All you're doing is you're basically taking a space and putting it into all the words between each letter. Not something you can do with a like clause. Regular expression counts the occurrences of strings within strings. So we're looking for A within a string. One, 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 capital A. In this case, we're looking for uppercase A, E, I, O, and U, uppercase vowels. And we get, in some of them, two, I, and A. There are no uppercase ones there. Obviously, if we use lowercase, we're going to get quite a different result. As you can see, the numbers have gone up. Let's try this case. Find all values located in a town containing the word San followed by subsequent words with I in them. From my venue table. San, 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 San. And you look in all of these, you've got an I somewhere in here. And you can obviously substitute this for A or O. We find San and we find six records. I'm not quite sure which one we found here, but we'll find something A and O. Probably these two. It's lost some I's and it's gained some A's and O's. And A, I, and O. We'll probably have more records, either six or more. No, we've actually got four. No, incorrect. Not A, I, and O. That's just looking for A. If we change this, Obviously, this is just A, and now just A, and let's go and change this. And now let's try just searching for A. And as you can see, we have fewer rows. That's the very basics of using regular expressions. We do not want to go into a heck of a lot of detail because this is really all about using POSIX, Unix standards, and Perl you want to learn more about regular expressions, read the Oracle manuals, because I could talk about this for about six months and probably never complete it, and show you a huge number of examples, but we don't want to go that far with it in a course like this.
Let's take a very brief look at using a regular expression inside a constraint, a check constraint. So here I'm going to add an email address to an arbitrary table inside my schema. I'm going to add the check constraint on the email column and you want to ensure that the email address always contains an at symbol. So we alter the table and we say check regular expression like. We're just basically looking for this thing inside there. You obviously can't say where email like because it's not part of a SQL statement. So the regular expression gets executed as an embedded in expression without having to actually include a SQL query. What I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate by updating one with an at sign and one without. So let's take this example. Let's push this into here. This is a practical application inside Oracle. So let's add this field to my table. If I go to this table here, there's my act table. That now has an email field. Look at the data. Here are all my acts and all my emails are null. Let's go back to here. Let's alter the table and add the check constraint. And I can actually go into the table again and look at the constraints. And I will find the check constraint in here. And yes, I call the email address. And I should be able to open this. Oh, wait a minute. Here. Well, it, it's, it's there anyway. I can see the search condition. Now let's go back to here. Now let's add something. So we're going to try to add Bob Dylan, who has an at sign in his email address. It says one row updated. I'm going to go and try and update Paul McCartney, and it's going to say you can't do that because the check constraint email address is violated. The pattern does not match. So if I go and look at the data again, I should be able to find Let's sort it by name. Where is Bob Dylan? Oh, we've got to actually update it. Refresh. There's Bob Dylan with his email address. And obviously, if we go and look for Paul McCartney, we're going to find no change in there. And I'm going to clear this up and drop that field from that table. There's one more thing I want to introduce you to briefly with respect to regular expressions in Oracle. It's called the Oracle Expression Filter. It's a component a rules manager allows application developers to store, index, and evaluate conditional expressions in one or more columns of a relational table. Essentially, it tells you what is an expression filter, Match incoming data with conditional expressions, maintain complex table relationships, application attributes. There's a whole slew of information here. Essentially, it allows you to apply regular expressions to the storage and management of data in a database. This can get really complicated. In my opinion, this type of processing is better left to the number crunching capability of front-end application languages such as Java and C and ASP and whatever you use on that level. What you're actually starting to do is you're starting to put too much application logic into the database itself rather than just simple basic structural business logic which is essentially things like foreign key and primary key checks. I tend to shy away from putting any kind of check constraints in a database because you're beginning to make the validation or and masking of data and you're beginning to put that that processing that verification process of data into the database itself it tends to put too much of a processing burden on the database 
The difference between database and a front-end application tool is that the database is a data cruncher, and a front-end application tool such as Java is actually a number cruncher. It's good at processing options and controls, such as using if-then-else statements and case statements and object structures. A database is good at storing things and connecting things and doing it efficiently. It's often my opinion when doing modeling to keep the model as simple as possible, not put too much processing power into the database itself. If you want to read about this, you can read about it here. I found it initially by going into Google and searching online for the Oracle expression filter. I found an Oracle link right here. That's enough about regular expressions.